Mr. Gary Creamer, if you please. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us um, for the Ben Bauer Rising Star Award program. Um, I'm very thrilled to be here. Um, ben and I have been talking about this, as we said, since probably a year, uh, it's probably been about a year now. Um, he had sent me some shorts of his that um, I wanted to program for the festival because I curate shorts. And uh, then he kept adding to it like, oh, I've got, you know, I've got this new film <laughs> and I just directed my first film and I just wrote this film and I just produced this film. So um, it was fun to, to sort of see him develop over the years. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we were able to do this. Uh, so I'd ask you to please stay on mute. Um, we'll do questions at the end. I'm gonna moderate about nine or 10 questions with Ben first and then take your questions with a hand raise and it can be a, this or it can be the kind that you do through the chat. Um, I now wanna welcome Hueflix rising star Ben Bauer. Uh, and get a few words from him, and then have James Dugan and Bill Egan present him with his award. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep this very short. I, uh, it is, it is honestly, like I said at the beginning of the program, like it is such an honor to be able to showcase my work like this, and I am, I am so grateful that, like, not only did y'all watch the films, but you're, you're here to talk to me about them, um, you know, because it's this, part that's like my favorite part about getting to go to a festival is is meeting people and shaking hands and kissing babies and all that stuff um so i am glad that we figured out a way to virtually do that it's it's very exciting and i'm looking forward to this oh god <laughs> oh just got that's all right so I'll, I'll just jump in here so so i want to keep my part short as well because what i really want to do is make sure gary has enough time to ask all his deeply probing questions of Ben and um, and for all of you to get a chance to uh, talk to Ben and ask some questions and things like that. So uh, QFlix, we love to give out awards is our mantra here. And so we all probably met Ben through uh, some <clears throat> something like summer. I think that was probably the first time most of us got to meet Ben in person and be like, oh my God, it's yes. <laughs> And when Gary came with us, the idea about all these different things and put this program together and we're like, this is absolutely it. So, so when, you know, we can get the chance to support an artist and help uh, nurture their career, you know, showcase any work that they put together. And that when Ben is old and washed up at like 39, then we can, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we can wow. give him the Lifetime Achievement Award at 39 and then... <laughs> No. So as we go along, so we get to that point when he's 80, 90, 100 years old, and we can say, oh my God, remember back in 2020, when we had to do all this on the computer, we couldn't be in person. We do that. So I am going to virtually hand this Rising Star Award through the magic of television oh. to Mr. Ben right oh, here. Oh, oh thank my God, you. that's amazing. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. <laughs> so. Uh, and, you know, again, I'm keeping this very short and brief. Uh, this really means so much. Um, I, 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 I am so thankful to QFlix. This is my third time screaming, screening with you guys. And um, yeah, you guys have just been so supportive the entire time. And it really, really means a lot. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and, and again, like, thank you to all of you watching right now. Uh, this is, this is really great and I'm, I'm very humbled and very excited uh, to share this with all you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, man. Thank you <laughs> I was gonna say, everybody do whatever. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, you ready for the probing? I am I'm ready to be <laughs> probed. <laughs> okay. Ooh. All right. Um, What's the Ben, you've, you've made a career out of being cute and humiliated in an endearing way. <laughs> um, and I want <laughs> and I think that's what yeah. I like about it. It, it. Can you talk about your penchant for comedy? I mean, I love your expressions. I mean, watching the scene in Hashtag Adulting where you're in the elevator and you keep that face the entire ride up is great. Um, and I love that you make really weird sex noises. Um, I, oh, you know, wow, yeah. Um, so, could you uh, so the question this, is, yeah, is your, your penchant for being sort of humiliating, humiliation comedy and humiliation humor <laughs> is, 
Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess, I guess the, the, the first thing that I really did was hunting season. And in that, uh, I remember the writer, director, creator, John Marcus, um, a big note that I got a lot was like, okay, now make faces. Like he wouldn't specify what kind of faces he'd be like, this just happened, make a face. Okay. Now this happened, make a different face. And so that like, that being like one of the first roles that I, that I had, um, you know, I kind of <laughs> kept that as a note. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I, I really gravitate towards uh, roles that are kind of going through it. Um, and like it being, you know, a breakup or embarrassing moments or, you know, awkward sex. There is like a storm going through my bedroom right now. So if you hear wind whistling through through my earbuds, uh, that is that. Uh, okay, great. Um, but yeah, and then and then you know, uh, I, I guess that's a, a, a big note that I got from hunt, from hunting season is like when people saw it, they they really gravitated towards um, how kind of like awkward Alex was, and that kind of seemed like something that. Uh, you know, in, in work that I've done since then, like people can viscerally like attach to it and kind of like put themselves in, in that kind of a, of a experience and kind of just like feel for the character, but also, you know, feel, laugh at, <laughs> yeah, laugh at themselves. Yeah. Um, because, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I've done on camera is stuff that most people can kind of, uh, relate to um and so it's I think that owning that sort of like embarrassment for myself gives other people the opportunity to mm -hmm. and I'm all for for catharsis yeah well uh, it's, uh, it's endearing I mean you know it's like the foibles you you display are cute and funny because it's <laughs> like you you're sort of like we're watching you realize what has just happened like getting a guy's phone number and not thinking oh he's actually interested in me or you know um a scene where you know you've you've you know drank all the, the liquor you don't realize it's like wait i can't throw anything at anybody you know um, oh, yeah. you know so so i think it's, it's, it's cute um you started your career making a web series can you talk about that media format which is a new media format and it's been popular for you know, almost a decade now, but you, Hunting Season was one of the first I got to see. Why choose to go to web series versus say film or television first? Because I think that was an interesting choice that you did that, then you made your own web series and made shorts and features. Sure. And well, I mean, the, the reason Hunting Season is because I very much gravitated towards the material. Like it didn't really matter what what medium it was it was going to be released under like I gravitated toward the material like I was like this is new and hot and sexy and kind of funny and like I really want to be a part of it um you know from then I I've done a bunch of web series stuff um mm -hmm. like I've, I've done like one episode of things here and there um and there's there's something like incredibly pure about making a web series because you know it, it's it's very similar to like a lot of uh short film stuff but like in a web series people are coming together and they are like pulling tricks out of their hats that they never had and then they're getting like friends of friends to come help build a set piece and then that person has a friend who could play the doctor in this one scene and it's just very much like you just yeah, um, make yeah, it well, happen yeah. And, and that's something like I've, I've, I've really appreciated because it makes you feel like you're a part of something really big, even if you only have like, you know, 25 bucks and a dream um, to make the thing with. Uh, so it's, I think the camaraderie of it is why I love it so much. But, but one of the things that I talk about when I teach and curate shorts is that short films and I equate web series with that in a sense, because you are making, even though it's a series of 10 episodes or whatever it is, and they're all 10 minutes long, it's like making 10 short films. Yeah. Um, 
but it's the idea that you can experiment and do things differently and, and try something that you don't have the gamble or the risk of a huge film production to do. You can just do it in 10 minutes. And if it doesn't work in one episode, you can fix it in the next, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and the same. Well, and it's also the, like, sorry. It, it's also like the, from a monetary standpoint, like, you know, you're not dealing with a, a you know, hundred million dollar budget. You're dealing with like a thousand bucks in a dream. Hundred dollar um, budget, right? Yeah. So it's it's so much like less pressure. So you feel more free to like do more things. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about that with when we talk about your shorts. But um, I know hunting season was your Carrie Bradshaw Meg Ryan role, and I'm curious why you think gay men identify so closely with those kinds of characters because you've told me that that's you know what you wanted to do. Yeah. Um. So, I mean the the Carrie Bradshaw thing is just like. Every gay man, especially like a gay man in New York City, considers themselves the star of their own show, period. Um, so that's a very easy character to identify with. Um, the, the Meg Ryan of it all didn't actually, like, when I wrote something new, like, that was specifically because I wanted to be America's gay sweetheart. Um, I don't know. You are, Blanche, you are. <laughs> I mean, God bless, from your mouth to God's ears. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying, uh, but I have noticed like through the freedom that I get uh, because the budgets are so small, I'm not taking these like huge risks. I have gotten to branch out and like, you know, I, I wanna find my inner final girl, like my inner, inner Nev Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, but as yeah, I mean, Carrie Bradshaw, I can't take much credit for because like I did not create that role, but there is, you know, there's something like fun and sexy about not just being the star of your own show, but being the star of like your own story that like you write yourself. Um, so it's very, it's very easy to, to relate to that journey. Well, and that's just it. You've, you've transitioned to writing and then now directing. And I want to talk about expanding your career because a lot of that is about creating opportunities for yourself as an actor or a writer or a director. And as I said, taking a chance, telling a story that you, you want to, like your office is mine or the office is mine. It's like, I want to tell this story. I can do it in 10 minutes. I can do it in three sets with 10 characters. And yeah. if it doesn't quite work, it's a small risk you know, but it really, then, then you know, so, I make you know, something new, you can later. make it happen. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like the first, the first project that like I really created for myself or me and my friend did, um, Tandi Tolme and I, who created hashtag adulting together. I remember it was like, it was my 29th birthday. I had just moved back to Los Angeles from New York. She and I were out to dinner together and I was like, girl, we can't, we can't just like sit on our asses anymore. We have to like make it happen. Um, and then so like three days later, we had written the script for the first episode. Um, I think we shot it like two weeks later. Uh, and then, you know, we had such a great time and we had like a, a really great response to it that we just like kept that going. And then we were able to uh, raise some money on Kickstarter, which there are some people in here who definitely helped me make that. So thank you all of okay. you. Um, and like, keep doing that. And then, uh, but yeah, when, when I wanted to make The Office is Mine, um, I had, I had the idea for something that I hadn't done before. Um, and I remember I was at some gay event with an open bar and I, uh, I ran into Michael Verratti. Um, yeah, I mean, the open bar helped. Uh, I ran into Michael Verratti and he was like, he's, he's a gay about town and like, he knows everybody and, you know, he has a successful writing career. Um, but like his, his sweet spot is horror. And I had an idea for this horror film, but short film that I really wanted to write. I just didn't know how to, cause like I love horror and like I watch it all the time, but there's, you know, there's a, a methodology behind it. Like there, there's technical bits that you have to get. And I just did not know how. So like I accosted him at this party after having a couple of the free beverages. And I was just like, we're gonna do the thing and we're gonna make some stuff. 
and it's going to be really exciting. Um, and so like we've, we've now made, I, I think we've made four short films together. And that was only, we only started really working together like two years ago. Um, and honestly, that's, that's a huge, I, I'm so thankful for him because like him and his producing partner, Brandon Kirby are like so prolific. And the thing that I love about my relationship with them is like, I have an idea. Great. Let's talk about it. Like with the office is mine, like two weeks later, I think we had a, a first draft and then I, th I think we had finished shooting it and it was edited and everything within like six or seven weeks of that. So it's like, he's passionate about it and he can like make it happen. And I, I love it. And I love him very much. Okay. Well, I'm glad you have that partnership. That was a very long answer that I, no, no, no. I definitely answered great. like six different questions. Right. No, but it's great because I think you need to have, okay. the, I mean, you need to have the support system and, and you, it is about creating a family that you can work with and develop projects with. You can't, people, films don't get made in a vacuum. They're not made by one person. They're made by committee. They're made mm -hmm. by Kickstarter supporters, made by writers. They're made by directors. They're made by distributors, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a whole damn team. And Honestly, I see so many people who are on my whole damn team in this, and it's just making me very happy. Well, let's talk about the type of characters you want to play and the stories you want to tell. I mean, you've done different kinds of things like comedy and drama. You, you mentioned your pension for horror and your love of that. But are you looking to expand to features? Are you looking to continue to work in short films because they're, you know, visibility, web series? What, I mean, what is your, what is your plan? Girl, my lazy. plan is is to work. My plan is to like who gonna pay me? Um, no, but uh, I, I'm I'm super open to working in any medium. Um, I, as of right now, like definitely have a penchant for, you know, in and of myself, like I very much want to tell queer stories. Um, be it you know, I, like I have an idea for uh, another romantic comedy. I have an idea for like a mom-son buddy comedy. Um, Michael and I have two more horror scripts uh, pretty much ready to go. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a, I am, I am very open. I've got, I've got a lot of irons and a lot of fires and it's like, whichever one's ready to go first, I am, I am here for it and I am down. Well, let's talk about focusing on gay projects, because I, I, I really love that you make content by and for our community. And I think it's important to continue to focus and produce queer comedy and queer drama and queer projects. But I know that there are also actors who don't want to be pigeonholed and, you know, or cornholed or whatever the phrase is. Um, <laughs> but what is it that you see in terms of satisfying your audience, your fan base, or expanding your, your range in doing, you know, something totally different? Uh, oh, oh, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, no, I feel, I feel like, so, I mean, I feel like for me, as far as the stories I want to tell, they're going to be queer stories. They're, they're going to be, you know, I might take it in different directions from comedy to horror to drama and like even subcategories within those wider spectrums. Um, I just like for the work that I, you know, write or produce or direct or anything, I do want that to be a queer story. Mm -hmm. As far as like other stuff that I make, um, like I shot a movie last year where I, I play a certified card carrying heterosexual. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, is that going to be for my core audience? No. <laughs> but you know it's it's work and I don't think anyone's gonna begrudge me um mm -hmm. trying to work I, I think that's one thing about the at least the people that I've talked to who like are following me on this journey is that they are here to support me and you know I'm sure some of them have preferences as to what it is that I make but I feel like most people are 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 down for the ride so to speak did that answer your question like 
in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. But... Oh, Gary, was more frozen a little of, bit. Of are you going? To, are you? Am I there? Yeah, no. I said it's, you're back. you were answering the question about the different types of projects you're you're working on, but also that you want to branch out, but also stay true to your fan base. And I like that you do that. I want to see you do that because I I don't want to see you know people who produce gay content say, well, I'm done with that. I'm going to go do a whole bunch of other things now because I feel I've satisfied that. I think we still need our stories to be told and told in a humorous way or a scary way or a dramatic way. Mm -hmm. um, I oh, mean, completely. You, you've got to make the American remake of End of the Century. You know, you've got to do it. I mean, uh, oh God. Um, but let me ask why you make short films. And I'm not complaining because I love short films. I teach and I curate them. They're my favorite. I see them at every festival I go to. That's why I'm, I'm that's why I found you and, and have been following you. Um, they tend not to make money though. I mean, a lot of them are times calling cards for features. Um, they're low risk opportunities to experiment. What's the appeal as an actor to do something that takes two weeks to make as opposed to two years? Yeah. I I mean, this has less to do with uh, uh, as an actor, but as someone who produces like a large portion of the things that I make, it has to do with money. Sure. Um, uh, a, a feature film is a lot more expensive than a short film. Um, and, I, and I guess to a degree, a couple of a couple of the projects that I have made um, have been projects that I at least have an idea of how to expand them into a feature to the point where like if you know I met someone at a festival who was like hey that was fantastic I would love to see that as a feature and mm -hmm. I have you know a billion dollars here's a bucket of money go make that into a feature I'm like I'm ready to do that um, but I would, I would say that the more important thing for me has just been to keep making period and like just continue to tell as many stories as I can um, given uh, budgetary constraints and um, you know, all that stuff. I just, I just don't want to let too long go by with me not making. Right, right, yeah. Okay, so um, on that note, you know the game Fuck, Kill, Marry. Um, who, what actor would you want to kill or marry on screen, of course, wink, wink. Um, out, of, out of like the entire world? Yeah, You're not yeah. even gonna like narrow it down? Nope. I mean, they have to be a man. That's ha so I cut up half oh, the- half Oh, the okay. <laughs> oh God, I mean. Oh, on Lordy. screen, you know, you're married off screen. On screen, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would fuck. Uh, oh god. <laughs> Honestly, it would be kind of a hate fuck because I do not. I find them very attractive, but when they open their mouth, I'm just like, no, ma'am. Um, and that would be Nico Tortorella. I would definitely fuck them. Um, I would marry, uh, Mike Doyle, um, which if people don't know who he is, he is the writer director of the film Almost Love, which I believe is playing. Yeah. And he'll be here at yeah. Sunday two weeks from now. So um, like he's, <laughs> I mean, you can also Google him. He is like the dreamiest I... and like the kindest person, um, and then who would I kill? Oh God, I'm too nice. <laughs> I wouldn't do you it. You killed Chris Salvatore um, on the screen. Oh no, he killed you. Excuse Chris, me. He killed me. <laughs> uh, no, my boyfriend killed me. Uh, who would I kill on screen? Uh, yeah. For pure reasons of jealousy, I'm going to say Chris Salvatore. There we go. He's too good looking. It's not. Well, you've fair. developed it's quite not. a fall. <laughs> Did Gary freeze again? Gary. You rendered Gary speechless with that comment. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, sorry, well, I can take over for for him. Uh, Do we know what his uh, his question? Oh, there he is. Oh, yes, there I'm he sorry. Is. He's back. Yes, you developed you did, you developed quite a fan following. What is your weirdest fan encounter? I. I mean, I honestly can't say that I have ever really had like a weird fan encounter Um, because any like any time someone messages me or like comes up to me or like stops me in a bar or something, I am honestly just like so thrilled um, that that this person is like following my stuff and like watching my stuff and seems to enjoy it um, if they're going to like stop me somewhere um i will say that there have maybe been experiences where like (laughs) i may have been like slightly too inebriated to like really make a nice show of it um but uh yeah no i'm i'm legitimately just like so thrilled uh anyone wants to talk to me about stuff that i've made or like whatever i'm 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 down well, to have that segue. conversation. That's a good segue for me to open up to the audience. Does anybody have any questions for Ben? And you can do the, the raise hand function on the Zoom, or you can just physically put your hand up and I will acknowledge you. Susan, I see you. You got to have a question. <laughs> your hands <laughs> over your mouth. So I figure you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're working towards something. Go ahead, I, Susan. I always have questions. That's why he, he targets me. Um, because if I don't <laughs> have one, I will make one up on the spot because it'll but I just, just want to say hi and and I was just thinking of your weird fan encounters. It's like cause I don't know, I, yeah. There's there's one about a, a guy that has your poster on his bathroom wall and he something about seeing you Stop naked outing me. naked and, and <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry. I see you. Um, no, but there's. <laughs> I guess I was because I today while I was watching some of of your work and I was looking up other things while I was posting uh, to people to watch your work. I found like these really old interviews with you talking about fantasies with Jonathan Groff, and I was like, so I was just like wondering. <laughs> oh. I was just wondering, like, it just kind of made me think of, like, who's related to this other question. Who's, like, your, your, like, your dream cast? Like, if you could make a project with anyone out there. Like, is, is Jonathan Groff still on your list? Or is it, are there well, other people? Well, to clarify the Jonathan Groff thing, there was actually, like, a tumbr- Tumblr I, page. I, I wasn't, that was I was made. trying not to clarify the Jonathan Groff thing. But, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there any, any actor or actress that I would like love to work with? Yeah. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, um, yes. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> one is definitely, um, Anya Taylor-Joy who, who write, she was just on that show on Netflix, uh, The Queen's Gambit. Mm. Um, I've also watched her in a bunch of like, she's yeah. in the Emma, the latest Emma remake and the like, witch. yeah. Oh, The Witch. Yes, of course. I, I think she is so ridiculously talented. It's not even funny. Um, uh, also, I don't know how many people actually know this, but I am like the biggest Dakota Fanning stan. Um, I, I love her so much. And if there is a world in which I could play like her older brother or like her, her, I, I will be the trope of the sassy gay friend for Dakota Fanning. Um, I also, so me and uh, my friend TJ Marchbank, who directed something new and directed a bunch of uh, all of hashtag adulting, um, he and I collaborated on a mother fun mother-son buddy comedy in which like the dream the dream was to get Meg Ryan to play my mom um that is like that would be everything so yeah that's the answer Meg Ryan okay um we have two questions in the chat one is money aside what story are you dying to share 
Ooh. Um, okay, honestly. No, I don't. No, I will not. I will never do that. Not to this group of people. Uh, so the the original script that Michael Michael Verratti and I came up with uh, before we made The Office is Mine was a... I don't want to give away too much, but it's basically like Mean Girls plus gay people plus werewolves. And like, I am so obsessed with this idea. We have a short film version of it, um, but give, given like the the effects and like all that stuff, it would be uh, very expensive to make. Um, so we've been talking about expanding it to a to a feature, in which case, yes, it is going to be that much more expensive. But you know, if you're going to spend twenty to thirty thousand dollars on a short film, you might as well up the budget and make it a feature. Um, so that is that is like my dream project right now. Are there any actors and actresses that you want to work with and why was a question. So it sort of echoes the last question that came. But, um, you know, I think it's more, oh. want to, would you want to write a project for a certain person or um, oh. a certain person? Well, I mean, we, we did write a project for Meg Ryan. Uh, so, you know, if Meg Ryan, if you see this interview somehow, ever, um, then uh, yeah that would be that would be it what was the good housekeeping day role experience like laura wright cool or no oh no i think that was general, general hospital. hospital general hospital i'm sorry what did I say? <laughs> um I don't know what seriously I <laughs> uh seriously and like i know susan has been and visited uh uh soap opera sets a lot but like people who work in soap operas are some of the hardest working people like in the world like I showed up and I had my like eight lines and this other actress was there she had to be there all day and like it's just go 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 um I, I think we only shot my scene like two times because there legitimately was not time to do any more than that and it's like they have to, they learn their blocking like 10 seconds before they roll. And so it's, it's insane watching them go. Um, and so like, I am, I will constantly be in awe of them. It's insane. And like, everyone thinks it's so easy. Um, no, no, my friends, it is not. I was obsessed with soap operas for about two years. Uh, so I, I validate your comment. Um, yeah, the other comment in the chat is that it's acting boot camp. Uh, it's bananas, so. yeah. Um, so what challenge do you want to take on next? I mean, you've done the acting, you've done the writing, you've done the directing, <sighs> you've done some producing. I, so, I mean, like the next challenge that I would like to take on would be uh, producing this feature film because I've only produced short content um so that would definitely be be one um I also do want to direct more uh but definitely not something that I am in mm -hmm. uh because that was that was a lot because you know you're trying to have this like very touching heartfelt moment but in the the entire time all I could think was like okay if I have enough time to do this once more, then the light outside will be just perfect for that scene that we're trying to do next. And then we can be done by lunch. And then next thing I know, the scene's over. And I'm just like, uh, okay, did I act? Was like, <laughs> was there acting that occurred? Or was I just sitting there saying lines? Because I can guarantee I did not hear a word the, the other actor said. Um, but part of that whole experience, and like, I'll be very brief with this. Um, I'm just so thankful. Like when I, when I was putting together the team to make um, yours, mine, ours, I was just so lucky because everyone was like so professional and so good at what they were doing. Um, 
my uh, my director of photography, uh, Michael Thomas, he he had he had directed a film called First Position that did festivals like a year or two ago, and like I saw that and was just like so blown away. He shot it all himself, and so I saw him and I was just like, I have to work with you. Um, and we vibed really well together. And so it was great. He brought a team of like gaffers to work. And then, you know, Michael and Brandon are just so great. My actors were so fantastic. Like I had to give, I think one, maybe two acting notes the entire time. Like they just had it. Um, so yeah, I mean, just note to Mm -hmm. you, if you ever want to direct something like work with professionals who just make you look good no matter what like no matter how bad you cock it up like you at least have them uh raising the level for you Mm -hmm. oh your quarantine cocktail and tv show oh gosh um i mean quarantine cocktail has basically just been vodka sodas like i stopped by trying to be fancy like way back in march um So yeah, it's just been vodka sodas basically. Um, Oh God. And then uh, uh, the show was, I only remember the Spanish name, but Casa de Papel. House of Flowers. A house of- Flowers. (laughs) Hey baby, what was the Casa de Papel? The show where they broke into the mint? Money Heist? Money heist. Money heist. I watched the first season. <sighs> that was so embarrassing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I was so obsessed with that show. We watched all four seasons, just like bam, 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 bam. And I have never watched a show that made me uh, laugh and cry and sit on the edge of my seat so much. Um, so yeah, that. Oh. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Where do you want to go after it's safe to travel? Uh, honestly, I would like to go on my honeymoon. <laughs> um, what? Why? So I got, I got, well, <laughs> why? That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, we got married uh, in September and we went to, uh, we, we were supposed to go to Paris for two weeks. Like we were going to, or Paris, wine country, Nice, um, like the whole thing uh we ended up having a lovely honeymoon we went to um uh Ogunquit, Maine and the Finger Lakes and it was beautiful we had a we had a wonderful time you know just like our our COVID wedding uh it ended up so much better than we could have anticipated so um but yes I would love to I would love to go to France there's a message in the chat we don't believe you're married can your husband show up uh he's <laughs> I'm just going to be entirely honest. He's currently making dinner in his underwear, so he will not be popping in. But I do have this diamond ring. Okay. So that is Are you giving me the finger? I mean, I could have just bought it for myself. (laughs) But he is here. I guarantee. Does anybody have any other questions for Ben? Because it's about 9.15. We should be wrapping this up. Uh, Not that we couldn't talk to you all night, but you were probably going to want to eat dinner. I mean, yes, a little bit. Um, well, I just want to say, I, sorry. No, it's just that I'm just, I just want to say, oh, someone did just ask what hair product I use. Um, and I use uh, Daviness sea salt spray, and then I blow dry, and then I use American Crew Fiber. Um, I've been using it for like eight years and I do not think I will ever make another choice. Uh, but before we go, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who who came to this. Um, Joe, I know that it is very late where you are and I appreciate you being here so much. Um, thank you, like it really means so much that, that you guys are here and being a part of this and a huge thank you to Gary and Bill and James and everyone at QFlix. This is, I mean, like, this has been such a bright spot in like such a weird year. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you. And we hope that you keep making work so we can continue to showcase it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ben. We really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us. And I'll plug one more time. 
keithflixphilly.com. Please, please go check out all the amazing work. Please tell your friends about this. They can see Ben's program all the way through the end of the month. And uh, we look forward to 2021 and seeing what Ben's been up to since then. Thank you all. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you.